Welcome back friends. In this video we shall discuss about the polysaccharides and as we discussed about the disaccharides in the previous videos. So this is the continuation of the lecture and I'm sure for any student who was with me in the previous video will understand this part also. So at the word suggests the word poly means many and saccharides means units. So polysaccharides are formed as the result of the condensation of many monosaccharides units to form a chain. So assuming this sickle represents a monosaccharide, then if we have many monosaccharides joined in this way, this molecule can, call, can be called as a polysaccharide. polysaccharide. Or in other words, polysaccharides, they are polymers of monosaccharides. Polymers of monosaccharides. So, the chain are variable in length, although usually the chain are long, and they are sometimes blanched or sometimes unblanched. If you are saying they are blanched means, assuming this is our chain, and then if they are blanched means here we have a blanch, and here maybe you can have another blanch. So this is this is blanching, and in in in, in polysaccharides, the bond in the straight chain is one comma four glycosidic glycosidic, while the bond of the blanching is one comma six glycosidic. So how are the bond one comma four and one comma six takes place? or they occur, we shall see later that the blanching is not done in the fourth carbon but in the sixth carbon is how we saw in the structure of, of glycogen if you remember. So now they are they can be blanched or unblanched, folded or cold, in which case they are suitable for storage, such as starch. So Normally, the polysaccharides which are coiled, coiled polysaccharides, polysaccharides are used for storage and more special here, our, our normal example is starch and glycogen. So, most polysaccharides are polymers of monosaccharides. This is not most, it is all polysaccharides, all polysaccharides, they are polymers of monosaccharides. There are some compounds which may be similar, similar to polysaccharides, but they are not polysaccharides. So, especially exosan sugar, and have the general formula. It is C six H ten and O five. Then N. So the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen remains the same which is 2 less 1 is in other carbohydrates. So here the general formula of polysaccharides is it's not C6H12 then O6 then as represented here in the notes. Why? Because as we know that when we are forming polysaccharides we are losing two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. In every bond formed. So the general formula cannot become like this. And N is the number of carbon atoms, and normally it is greater than 40. So a polysaccharide normally contains greater than 40 units of the of the monosaccharides sugars. So here let's discuss about the properties or characteristics of polysaccharides. First, they are macromolecules. Or they are large molecule, they are not sweet, they are insoluble, slightly soluble in water. They are not sweet, as you can see, combo kilamba unga, unga mahindi nakuta, haunogi chote. That's because unga mahindi may contain starch, which is not sweet, starch the polysaccharide. Pia, they are insoluble, or slightly soluble in water. They are not crystalline, or not crystallizable. Confirmably, unga mahindi no na always koyoka kwenye crystal. Again, here they are represented by the general formula C6H10 then O5. 
N is the general form of polysaccharides. Lakini pia we have some of the chief functions, chief functions kazi kuu zinazofanywa na polysaccharide. Polysaccharide zinafanya kazi kuu gani? Eh hapa tunazo kazi kuu kama tatu hivi. Ya kwanza ni storage energy store for example ni starch na glycogen then they use these structural materials such as cellulose so the first is energy store energy store about na kotuna starch and glycogen glycogen alafu baada hapo namba 2 tuna kotuna structural materials structural structural material ba constructive material tunakuwa tuna constructive material tunakuwa tuna tunakuwa tuna cells na tumika is structural material in plants cells lakini pia hapo kuna reason sizo hapo chini kwamba why are they use this structural why are they use this storage molecule so sometimes they can ask you that why polysaccharides they are used as a storage molecule rather than monosaccharides or disaccharides uh, the first reason is that their large size makes them more or less soluble in water that's the first reason why are they using for storage but the second reason they exert no osmotic or chemical influence in the cell and the third reason they fold into compact shapes and they are easily converted to sugars by hydrolysis when required so these three reasons the first the second and the third reason they are the reasons why the polysaccharides they use this storage molecule as we have already seen polysaccharides are polymers of monosaccharides and if the polysaccharide is made from the pentose sugar it is called as pentosaccharides while if the polysaccharides is made from the hexose sugar it is called as hexosaccharides so the two most common polysaccharides they are starch the most common polysaccharides they are starch glycogen and cellulose starch glycogen and cellulose so let's discuss some of these first in this video and then later in the next video so starch is the polymer of alpha glucose with the polymer of alpha glucose and if you follow my videos I, I i hope you know what is alpha glucose starch is the polymer of alpha glucose is the major fuel store in your plants but is absent from animals where the equivalent is glycogen so in animals we have no starch but we have glycogen which performs the same function of energy store it can easily be converted back to glucose for the use in respiration in germinating seeds the glucose may also be used to make cellulose and other materials needed for growth costachi unaweza kaibadilisha kwa rais kudi kwenye glucose kwa ajili ya kutumia kwa respiration na pia kwenye mbegu zinazoota starch inatumika kutengeneza cellulose maana kwa starch unaitengenezea una unaiodize to form glucose baada ya glucose inatengeneza cellulose lakini tunachosema ni kwamba hapo kuna components za starch starch na component mbili ambayo ni amylose pamoja na amylopectin amylose yenyewe ni straight chain structure consisting of several thousand glucose residues joined by 1,4 bonds kama nilivyoambia mwanzoni kwamba the straight chains they are formed by the by the joining of the molecules by the 1,4 glycosidic bond these bonds causes the chain to coil helically into a more compact shape kwa hiyo kwa sababu 1,4 bond yanatengeneza straight chain kwa hiyo amylose itaonekana amylose itaonekana ime coil sana hivi ukicompare na amylopectin lakini ukija kuisoma hapa amylopectin ndio kwamba amylopectin is also compact as it has many branches formed by 1,6 glycosidic bond Ko amylopectin defense yake na amylose ni kwamba amylose ni straight chain amylopectin yenyewe ina branches formed by 1,6 glycosidic bonds it is up to twice as many glucose molecules or residues as amylose 
Kopia ya amyloplectin yenyewe ni ndefu ina many glucose residue. A suspension of amylose in water gives a blue black color with iodine or potassium iodide solution. So this is very important point. A suspension of amylose in water give blue black color with iodine. Where is suspension of amylopectin gives a red violet color. This form basis of the test for starch. As we know in the laboratory that when we are testing for starch, tunapata langi ambao ni blue black color. Lakini blue black color inatokana reaction kati ya amylose na iodine solution. Lakini reaction kati ya ya amylopectin na iodine solution inatengeneza red violet color. Kwa kama wewe tunategemea basis of the test iwe ni blue black color maana yake hiyo imetokana na na amylose na sio amylopectin. So the main difference between these constituents polysaccharides is that amylose consists of an unblanched chain. Amylose consists of an unblanched chain. While amylopectin consists of a blanched chain. These are called to form a helix. So they are called to form a helix. And in this helix the hydroxyl groups in this helix the hydroxyl groups point into the interior and they are therefore not free to take part in hydrogen bonding. For this reason, it has no cross linkages or bond and therefore they are not strong enough to form structural polysaccharides such as cellulose. So, assuming this is amylose and then amylopectin is outward of the amylose. So here at the center we have amylose then here we have amylopectin. So, all of these compounds, the hydroxyl group, they point inward. And having hydroxyl group pointing inward means it, they are unable, unable to, form, to form hydrogen bond. And you may look on the conditions for hydrogen bonds to be formed in my general chemistry lectures. So, the inability to form hydrogen bond makes them not able to form the structural polysaccharide. So starch molecule accumulate, accumulate to form starch grain. They are visible in many plant cells, notably in the chloroplast of leaves, in storage organs such as potato tuber, and the seeds of cereals and legumes. Kwayo, Starch ina, inaonekana kwenye chloroplast, inaonekana kwenye storage organ kama potato tuber. Hivyo ni viazi mviringo lakini pia kwenye mbegu kama mbegu za nafaka pamoja na legumes, yani kama maharage. So the grain appear to be made of layers of starch and they are usually of characteristic size and shape for the given plant species. Kwa kila plant species ukienda kwenye muindi, ukienda kwenye mimea mbalimbali inakuwa na different structures of the Starch, starch grains. Now, functions of starch. The first is the storage of polysaccharide in the form of large aggregation of molecule. As we know that the starch is the storage, storage polysaccharides. So the form in which carbohydrate is stored in the plants. And the second function of starch is the direct source of food for all animals. Since plants, they store excess glucose produced in photosynthesis as a starch or in the form of starch. So all things we consume, they are always starch. When we are consuming rice, we are consuming millet, maize, all those, they are, they are starch in nature. Now let's discuss about the a little bit about the glycogen. So glycogen is simply the animal equivalent to starch. Glycogen is the animal equivalent to starch. So glycogen is the animal equivalent to starch, being a storage polysaccharide made from alpha glucose. Many fungi also store carbohydrates in the form of glycogen. <coughs> now glycogen has a molecular structure like that of amylopectin but with much blanching. So amylopectin has blanching, but glycogen has more blanching as compared with the 
amropectin. It is more soluble than starch and is stored in the cytoplasm of cells as thin glanules. So in vertebrates, glycogen is stored chiefly in the liver and muscle cells, both centers of high metabolic activity, where it provides a useful energy reserve. So it is conversion back to glucose is controlled by the hormone, particularly glucagon and insulin. So if we have glucose, then insulin can convert it to glycogen, and the glycogen can convert and glucagon can convert it back to glucose. So it forms thin glanules inside the cells, which are usually associated with smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And these are normally muscle cells or liver cells. Let me end here in this lecture, and in the next lecture we shall discuss about the cellulose and other compounds which are similar to polysaccharides and other different uses of polysaccharides in the animal body. Subscribe the channel and share the link and the channel for for other students to to assess these videos. Also don't forget to click the link below in the description to join my telegram group for discussion of any concern. Thank you.